UTPA baseball did something they hadn't done in 42 years. We'll break down the history. UTPA men's and women's basketball with a pair of big games against New Mexico State. And UTPA athletics hires its first men's soccer coach since 1997. This is Brown Country. Welcome to Brown Country. I'm Jonah Goldberg. There's a saying that in baseball, pitching wins championships. Others say it's pitching in defense. But either way, this past weekend, the Bronx put the whack on notice. Bronx hosting Northwestern State to open up the Al Ogletree Classic. Pick it up in the bottom of the first. Two on, one out for Alex Howe, and he comes up with an RBI single. Brings home Michael Baca, Bronx up one nothing. And when you're facing Sam Street, one run, might as well be 10. Top one, Brett Underwood flies out to center field. Joel Atkinson grounds out to shortstop. And then Chase Dodgerill strikes out looking. Three up, three down for Street. Top of the second, Caleb Dugas on the ground to first. Great play by Victor Garcia Jr., one away. Reagan Kaufman also on the ground, this one's a third. And then Edwin Gomez pops out to second. Six up, six down for Street. Third inning now, Matthew Alford, swinging. Garrett Logan, gone fishing. Jake Kluot, on the ground to short. Sam Street, perfect through three. Top four, Underwood grounds out to short. Atkinson, swinging. 11 up, 11 down for Street. So two outs and two strikes on Dodgerill, but he lines a single to left field to break up the perfecto. And make no mistake, Street knew what was going on. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta admit I did. So, uh, you know, it's a bit disappointing, but at the same time, it's gonna happen. So, you know, it's, if it's not gonna happen in a game, you know, it's one of those things that's just meant to be. So, you know, obviously aware of the situation. I mean, uh, one zip ball game was more the thing on my mind. So, uh, you know, one zip can't let them score. That's it. <laughs> Until they get two, you can't let them score one. So, that was all that was going through my head. So, Street now out of the stretch for the first time, and he responds by getting Dugas to ground out to end the inning. And then, if you can believe it, Street only got better. Top five, Kaufman flies out to left. Gomez grounds out to second. And Alford flies out to center. Street's fourth one, two, three inning of the night and far from his last. Top six now, Logan, just looking. Kluot, swinging. And then Underwood, on the ground to short. Seven straight retired by Street. Top seven, more of the same for Street. Atkinson flies out to right. Then Dodrill, the Demons' only base runner to date, swinging. That brings up Dugas, who works Street's first three ball count of the night, but grounds out to short. One hitter through seven for Street. On to the eighth. Kaufman down on three pitches. Gomez swinging. And then Alford grounds out, Street with a one hitter through eight. Ninth inning now, still one to nothing Bronx. C.J. Webster pinch hitting, and he strikes out. Kluot swinging, 11 strikeouts for Street. He retired 26 of the first 27 batters he faced. After a bloop single and a pair of hit batsmen, the tying and go-ahead runs are in scoring position on second and third, but on three and two, Street gets Dugas to ground out to complete the two-hit shutout. Bronx win one to nothing, and Street earns whack pitcher of the week on it. You know, every time Sam pitches, he keeps us in the game. We know we have a chance to win. Um, and it seems like our defense rises up when he pitches. I mean, we got, uh, I mean, he cruised through eight innings, got in a jam in the, in the ninth. Anybody else, I would have pulled him out after he hit the first batter. But, uh, you know, he's our best guy, and it seems that our defense rises up when he pitches. So we, we got really good pitching and um, really good defense. The biggest thing is just to disrupt their timing. So that's where the changeup comes in, the breaking ball, uh, you know, varying the fastball as well. You know, if you can, if you can throw a couple of different uh, speeds with your fastball, uh, it really acts like another pitch as well. So especially from my arm angle, I feel like I get different, can manipulate it to get different run. Uh, so if I can do that successfully, uh, it'll really help out. Bronx facing Prairie View A&M in the first game of the day Saturday. And if you're Blake English, how do you follow Street up? Like this. English retired the first six batters he faced and allowed only an infield single through three. Didn't allow a runner into scoring position until the fourth. 
and facing a bases loaded jam in the fifth, retired the final 10 batters he faced. Did so with some help from his defense too. English pitched eight shutout innings, scattering four hits and one walk while striking out three. English got all the support he needed in the third. Bases loaded one out, and Alberto Morales lifts a fly ball to left field. Scores Brian Ramirez. It's one to nothing Bronx. So, on to the ninth. The Panthers have the tying run at second, and Clayton Haltum gets Walter Wells to ground out. The Bronx win their second straight one nothing game for the first time since 1972. Third time in program history, first time the Bronx have done it at home, and the first time they've done it against two different teams. We thought about that um, with him. I mean, he's, uh, he's a very good pitcher. I mean, we're counting on him to help us in the white, but he pitched outstanding. Again, today our pitching, like you said, it was really, really good in our defense. Uh, again, uh, outstanding defense. So we were able, again, one nothing. I mean, as you see, I had, you know, three strikeouts today. You know, I threw eight innings, I put up zeros, and, you know, I, I basically had 21 contact hits. Uh, it was, I just kept the ball down and let my defense do the work because, you know, I, I, I believe in them. As the game progressed, he got better. I like, it. like you said, he, uh, he retired 10 in a row. I thought his last uh, three innings uh, were a lot better than early on in the game. So he settled down. He's got a little feel for the breaking ball, uh, Jonah. And, um, and uh, the last three innings, I thought he pitched pretty well. Bronx facing Northwestern State in the nightcap, and Matt Harrell was strong early. Gets Chase Dodrill to bounce into a double play to end the second. On to the fourth, Bronx down three nothing. Alex Howard third with nobody out, and Alberto Morales gets into one to left. Off the top of the bullpen wall. RBI double scores How? Bronx within three to one. Two outs later, it's Evan Mason. RBI single brings Morales home. Bronx within one, it's three to two. Next inning, bases loaded one out for Brian Stites. And that brings home Victor Garcia Jr. from third. How cut down trying to score, but still, it's the Bronx tie the game at three. On to the ninth. Bronx down 6-3. Two on, one out, or back to Howe. That's an RBI single. The Bronx pull within two. They loaded the bases, but couldn't get anyone else across. Demons win 6-4. You know what, they showed uh, tremendous effort coming back and giving, giving us a chance to win in the ninth inning. And that's all you can ask for, uh, the opportunity. Uh, to win, so I'm uh, very pleased with the way they fought back. Unfortunately, that's that's the game. Sometimes you're going to get those hits, sometimes you're not. On to Sunday, Bronx facing Prairie View A&M again. Freshman Andrew Padron making his first start, and he was solid. Gets three ground outs to start the game. Top four, Michael Pittman down swinging. Padron went five innings, giving up one run on three hits. But don't worry, the Bronx gave Padron and company plenty of support. This is how the offense started the game. Alex Howe with a triple. And then Alberto Morales drives him home. One to nothing Bronx. On to the second. The Bronx have two on and one out. And there's Howe coming up with an RBI single. Bronx up two to nothing. Move ahead to the fourth. Bronx lead cut to two to one. And there's that man again. Alex Howe with an RBI double. His third straight three hit game Finish the weekend a whopping 11 of 15 to earn Whack Hitter of the Week honors. Bronx go up 3 to 1. Howe stole third, so that means when Jesus Garcia grounds out to short, Howe scores. Bronx up 4 to 1. Now the Bronx walked 13 times in this game, their highest total in three years. Six of them came in the fifth. Starts here with ball four to Victor Garcia Jr. One out later, Clayton Alton walks. Then Dylan Engelard walks to load the bases. That brings up Shane Ammon, and he's going after the first pitch. Good decision, because he drives home two with the single. Bronx up six to one. So Chad Flick out, Michael Dewey in on the mound, but it's more of the same. Howe draws a four pitch walk. Garcia walks to force in a run. And then Morales walks to force in a run. Bronx go up eight to one, go on to win nine to three. You know what, uh, he, he pretty much uh, delivered what we thought. He's going to be a really, really good pitcher for us, and he can fill so many roles. We just wanted to throw him out here and make, uh, make sure he got some innings in. Um, it's a long season, so as a starter, out of, as a setup guy, he can even close games. Uh, what happened for him, uh, always good for the freshmen to get their first win or their first hit. Well, you know, it feels good uh, once getting the first one out of the way, you know, it, it, you kind of settle down a little bit. So, uh, you know, my defense really helped me out today. We got a lot of run support, so it was just good. Started off well, got a good pitch to hit, but... Uh, 
you know, happy enough to get the win today. Um, Andrew Pedroni did a really good job. Um, and we're definitely, it was definitely a good thing to bounce back from last night's loss. I just told uh, Coach Lopez that he's on fire. Uh, you know, and I told him, I told both Lopez and I told Carson to stay away from him. A guy hitting that good, I don't want anybody around him, including myself. So, you know, we, we're going to keep our distance and uh, hopefully not wake him up because he is really on fire. The Bronx basketball teams with just a handful of games remaining. Coming up on Bronx Country, highlights from the men's and women's games against New Mexico State. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the Big Dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas. With four games left in the regular season for the UTPA basketball teams, each trying to make a move in a bunched up group in the WAC standings. To do so, they would have to contend with tough New Mexico State squads. We start with the men playing host to the Aggies and Jack Boga gets the Bronx off to a good start. It's two to nothing. The Aggies scored the next six, but the Bronx keep it close. 12 minutes to go and look at the aggressive move by Laurie Toivonen. Hits the layup, draws the foul, he hits the free throw to convert the three-point play. Bronx within 14-11. Two minutes later, the Aggies are up seven. But Javon Farrell takes a page out of Toivonen's book. Hits the layup and then the free throws. It's a four-point game. And then, one minute later, Farrell nails the jumper. Bronx within 18-16. The Aggies responded with an 8-0 run to go up 10. But Josh Cleveland puts the Bronx on the comeback trail. Hits the layup. Now, shortly after, he picks up his second foul, so Toivonen's back in, and he gets right back to work. That's his second three-point play of the game, Bronx within 27-21. And then Toivonen pulls up from behind the arc and nails it! His first career tray, Bronx within 31-26. 42 seconds later, it's Justin Leather's turn. Bronx within two. Minute and a half left in the half, it's time for Farrell. Ties the game! And then, with 41 seconds left in the half, Farrell makes a pair of free throws to cap a 17-5 run. Bronx up 33-31, but the Aggies shot 80% in the second half to come back and beat the Bronx 78-61. Our shooting is not good enough to keep them stretched out where their fours and fives leave the lane enough. So therefore, when our guards, Javon and, and, uh, and Boga drove, they're, they're running into seven foot five and six ten and athletic guys. So, you know, and uh, we had a, a, a good remedy there at the end of the first half when we got into the triangle, got them spaced out, and Javon kind of went to work off the dribble, and Latte did some good finishing. And but uh, you know, second half they just jumped back on us again, and we we just didn't have an answer for it. It's definitely frustrating. It was a couple of times I, uh, you know, got past my defender and big 75 dude right there blocked my shot. That's definitely frustrating when you know you can beat the one defender, but they got so much help and so much height. It's hard. Yeah, I mean, we it was a couple of times we had some nice, solid defensive possession and just threw it up to him and he dunked it. There's nothing you can do about that. As for the UTPA women's basketball team, visiting New Mexico State simultaneously, and the Bronx got off to a great start. Senior captain Laquita Garner into the game, and that's money in the bank. Seven to two Bronx. Next time down the court, Kaylin Boyd. Nine to two Bronx. The Bronx jumped out to an 11-2 lead in the first six and a half minutes. The Aggies responded with a quick 19-4 run to go up 21-13. But with eight minutes left in the half, the Bronx on the comeback trail. Keani Clark hits the layup. And then it's Alexandria Hill for three. 
Bronze within three. Next time down the court, Jasmine Thompson hits the jumper. Bronze within one. And that bucket set Thompson off. Pulls up for three not once, but twice. She'll hit a free throw on the next possession, puts the Bronx up 27-23. The Aggies took the lead back a minute into the second half, but Shante Goff answers with the layup, Bronx up 34-33. Bronx down six with four minutes left, Boyd hits the three to make it 70-67, but the Aggies close the game on a 13-4 run to beat the Bronx 83-71. Well, it was, uh, I guess the uh, New Mexico State game was a tale of two halves. I mean, we led 32 to 28, and then I don't even know what the final score was, but I know we got beat, oh, about 82-71. I think we gave up a lot of points in transition in the second half, and then we let them get to the free throw line. We fouled a lot in the last minute or so. It was about a four to five point game. But again, we just didn't finish. Um, we do a pretty good job of staying in the game, but we're not finishing right now. Uh, Brittany Bush, 16 points, 17 rebounds. I would say that's a pretty good pretty good night. I think uh, KK had 17 points. And uh, Jasmine Thompson came off the bench and had 12 points for us. But we, we've got to be more consistent with our rebounding. We out-rebounded them 12 the first half. They out-rebounded us the second half by 13. But we let them get away in transition. And, uh, we held them to under 20% the first half, and then the second half they shoot nearly 50%. So a little bit frustrating, but we're going to try to fight through it and see if we can't get better. And we got two big home games this week, and we're going to see if we can't turn the tide a little bit. Spring break is just a week and a half away. If you haven't made your plans yet, might I recommend Vegas? After all, that's where the WAC tournaments are this year. You can get a ticket to all 14 WAC tournament men's and women's basketball games for just $165. We even have an in on hotel rooms through corporate travel. So give us a call or visit utpabronx.com slash WAC today. Hey, we've been telling you Bronx Country just got a lot bigger, haven't we? Well, Viva Las Vegas! In recent weeks, we've told you about the Bronx upcoming soccer and track and field complex and women's soccer coaching staff. Well, what about men's soccer? Next on Broad Country, we'll let you know who's going to be leading the return of UTPA men's soccer. From 1987 through 1997, UTPA had a men's soccer team competing at the NCAA Division I level. Just over a year ago, UTPA Athletics announced the upcoming return of men's soccer. With the Bronx set to compete on the field for the first time in 18 years in 2015, they need a head coach. And now, they've got one. Paul Lease, who joins the Bronx after taking a ninth place Coker College program and turning them into one of the top five teams in all of Division II in a span of three years. While recording a 617 winning percentage in five seasons, Lease led his team as far as the second round of the NCAA tournament while winning two conference championships and two conference tournament championships. He's coached multiple Major League Soccer players, including United States captain Clint Dempsey. What was unique uh, about Coach Lease was the fact uh, I really liked his, what I would call the total athlete uh, leadership program from the academics, the athletics, the community service aspect of it. Uh, the way he defined, you know, team characteristics, leadership characteristics, uh, his ability, uh, I think, to prepare our student athletes for excellence in life, which is our purpose uh, statement for our department. It really went hand in hand with our Bronx standard, and I couldn't, I couldn't tell you at the end of the interview. He was the first one to interview. Uh, it was going to be really difficult for someone to beat him out for that job. Uh, he he blew us all away. So with a good year and a half to go until UTPA men's soccer takes the field for the first time. What is Coach Lease's first order of business? Well, you know, it's a brand new startup program. So, uh, you know, first and, first and foremost, he's going to be recruiting and recruiting and probably doing more recruiting. Uh, we are uh, opening up a brand new uh, complex, soccer track and field complex. So he'll be very involved in the, in the planning stages of that. Uh, but I think the majority of everything he'll be doing is putting together that squad of 25 for the fall of 2015. Big weekend for UTPA women's tennis. Three matches in three days, and they started with a 6-1 win at Valparaiso. The Bronx swept through doubles and nearly did the same in singles before settling for five out of six. 
dominating performances for Didi Fetchikova, Katya Stavrilaki, Kristel Amsalem, and Regan Greenwood, as they each took 12 of their 13 games. On Saturday, the Bronx started taking part in a tournament at Chicago State, beating the hosts and WACFO Cougars 6-1. The Bronx swept through doubles again, while taking four of the singles matches in straight sets. And then on Sunday, the Bronx completed a great weekend with their fourth straight win, dating back to the previous weekend, 4-3 over South Dakota State. The Bronx dropped the doubles point, but Didi Fachikova, Crystal Amsalem, and Regan Greenwood picked up wins to get the match tied at three. It all came down to number two, where Wanda Begelin needed to win a third set tiebreak to send the Bronx to victory. The Bronx kick off a four-match homestand this week, including matches Friday at 9 a.m. against Grand Canyon and 4.30 p.m. against Texas A&M and Kingsville, followed by Kansas City on Sunday at 1. It feels really good. We are very proud of the way we played and we're very excited to start off the season that good and strong. I think I saw more of a fire this weekend. We came off of a win from our last match and so I think as a team they really just wanted to go out there and prove themselves. We played really well in our first match and it gave them something to, to really work for. We played a conference match after that, something that we've been talking about for a while now. And they came out with great energy. We started off well and they really you know, closed out in singles really, really good. Um, and the next day, it was a tough day for us and they were really good opponents. Losing that doubles point to start off the day was a little bit stressful, but to see them go out there in their singles matches, to do what we've been practicing, and to do it really well and to really fight for each other, um, it's, it's really great to see. If you want to show your support for all of these student athletes and coaches, donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the money raised goes directly to student athlete scholarships, so visit BroncAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. One way you can donate to the Bronc Athletic Fund is by participating in our eighth annual bay fishing tournament, better known as BAIT, on South Padre Island on April 12th. You could be one of eight teams to win over $10,000 in cash prizes, including a $4,000 grand prize. Visit utpabronx.com slash BAIT for more information. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas. Here's what's on deck for the Bronx. Women's basketball home Thursday against Bakersfield and Saturday against Utah Valley, the latter of which is senior night. Both games at seven. The men play the same two opponents, albeit on the road. UTPA baseball plays a three game set at Lamar and then completes this road trip at UTSA on Wednesday. Men's and women's tennis with a combined five home matches this weekend, hosting WAC opponents Grand Canyon and Kansas City, while the women also play Texas A&M Kingsville. And track and field is in Idaho for the WAC Indoor Championships. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx Country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then, the Bronx! Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the Big Dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. 
Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas.